Let's move to another topic which is objects. Now objects in JavaScript is like the entirety, the central, the spinal cord of the entire JavaScript world. Now yes, I do agree that arrays can handle a whole lot of things and a data which is string, even boolean, even numbers and a mix of that. But in the world of JavaScript, we use objects like anything and especially when you're going to see your very first time that how APIs looks like, you're going to realize it's more over looking like objects and totally it's actually yes. So let's go ahead and understand the objects in very much a detail, a very much basics of it so that you can utilize them and can actually master them. This is going to be a huge, huge skill in your upcoming days of programming, especially working with the APIs. So how does it looks like? Now object is a bit different from the structure, whatever we have seen like variables, not even like arrays, it's totally a, entirely a different structure. So let's go ahead and have it. First and foremost, it always works with in almost the same. We can use uh, simple stuff like let, var or const. We're going to go for var for easy one of them, variable. And then you just name it out. For example, I'm going to call it as user. So that's going to be a fictitious user on my website. Uh, let's just say we want to define that how a user should look like. In that case, I'm going to sign an equal sign and then I'm going to use two curly braces. Yep, that's the big difference. Instead of the square brackets, we use curly braces in the users. And for more readability, you're going to see most of the people hit an enter here. Again, this doesn't has to do anything with the separation. This is for more readability. Now what goes inside is a key value pair. For example, uh, we're going to have a key of uh, first name. Uh, just like you declare any variable, this always almost follows the same practice. But the difference that comes up is we don't put an equal sign here anymore because already there is one equal in the equation, so we don't do that. Instead, we use a colon here, and that's the majority of the people where it where you are going to make mistake. And then you can assign any value to it. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and assign a first name. Then you put up a comma, just like you do in an array. And for more readability purpose, we're going to hit an enter again. And last name. And then we put up a colon. And then again, let's enter the last name. So this is going to be a string. Let's go a couple of more here. So we're going to simply design a role for this user as well. So role is going to be admin or all lowercase, however you like to go. Doesn't really matter. But not only the string, you can assign any values. Maybe you want to insert some numbers. Let's go ahead and insert some number. Maybe login count. You want to keep a track of it, 32. So that's your number. Is he logged in from Facebook? So we're going to say Facebook signed in. Maybe that's a Boolean value. So we're going to say true and false. And this gives us so much of flexibility to work compared to the array. And these are actually a bit more optimized compared to array. In the array, surely you can grab the values and can uh, actually pull the value with these numbers as an index. But here, actually, things are way more uh, drastic there. You can actually change the values, delete the values. It doesn't affect the performance much because everything is accessed by these key. Remember, on the left hand side, this is the key. And on the right hand side, this is the value. Now, some people make a mistake that always mark your key as an array. Now, surely there are special cases where it is possible. But as of now, I'm going to say just let's just stay to the basics and always make sure this is just a name, no double quotes or anything. On the right hand side, you can use strings, numbers, Boolean value or maybe anything else if you have in mind, you can actually have that too. So let's go ahead and have it. So this is our basic user that we got. Another thing that we want to know is how do I access values from uh, this object? So it's actually pretty simple. Let's go ahead and use the console log. So I'm going to just simply say user. So whatever your object is, just write the name of it and put a dot there. And now you can see all of them are being listed if you're using the same code editor. Let's just say I want to print out the first name. You go ahead, uh, save this up and you run this code. So let me just run this. So node, this one is 03 and we are into 10th file and it gives me the name. And yes, you might be wondering, is this console.log is coming up uh, similar to this? Yeah, almost similar to this. We actually can replicate this kind of functionality, which we will be doing uh, later on. But right now, let's just not do too much of that. And yes, your guess is right. The dot feature is almost like accessing an object and you can access any object just like this. But there is another way which I really don't like of accessing the object. Uh, but still you're going to see it in some of the code. So you just get an access to the, you type the object name. 
you type the square brackets and inside that you mention your key which is in this case let's just say is last name but there is a small issue here and which is like a small issue which a lot of people gets up let me run this and show you the error first so we're gonna run this and it says uh, last name is not defined but it is defined the only issue kind of ambiguity that comes up is this last name should be in the double quotes or is should be in the string format and it's weird I get you there that this was never defined as a string but the parameter that you try to access the user is passed as a string yes I know this is a bit strange thing but now you can see that if we get an access of that that's why you're gonna see programmers almost never like to use this one most of the time the dot notation is good but if you see this one don't panic out this is a common way of having the things now similar to this you can actually manipulate the values as well you get the access to it that means you can change it for example user dot user dot login count this count is going to be updated to 44 maybe i'm logging in too much on the website and then we just dump out the entire object or just the login count let's just go for log and i'm going to say user dot login count there we go pretty obvious stuff there we go so we got a 44 this time instead of 32. If you wish, we can actually go ahead and make a duplicate of this and we can move this guy a bit up. So before the updation happened, now we are having the login count, having an updation, and then we are having a login count. Save that, run that again. We see 32 before updation and 44. Now in case you want, you can actually dump out the entire object as well. There is no issue in that. The console.log actually handles that nicely. And in fact, we have a whole lot of things that we can do here. So notice here, we are dumping out all the things at one place. And in some of the places, instead of the console log, you're gonna see other things being used. So if I just remove all of this, we are gonna say console dot, and we can see console.log, error, warn, assert, uh, debug. There's a whole lot. The stable one is actually a bit interesting, a whole lot of blog posts are now getting attention of that let me show you that so this gives you a nice table of the indexes and the values so there we go there's a lot to explore there is a lot to learn about but most common is the console.log but just to prove the point that yes there's a whole lot the warning is there the errors are there it's not just about console log but it gets the highest popularity award so <laughs> we are going to use that a lot okay so this one is your small brief introduction about object. We have a little bit more to discuss, but before that, I would like to give you a small assignment. Let's just say you're defining an object for this mobile phone, let's just say an iPhone. So what are the properties you would like to insert here? Maybe name, model number, year release, price. So just try to see that how many can you fit it up and don't go beyond number seven, just seven properties only. There is no restriction, you can go, but we just want to have things a bit shortened up, bit nice and tidy so don't go for that uh, just go for the seven values only how much you want to insert in an object called iPhone whatever the latest version is and just dump it out using console.table click a photo reach me out on Instagram share a story it feels so much happy that somebody is actually following this up series learning it so take a moment to reach me out on Instagram and just share the story that's it okay let's catch up in the next video because we, we need to discuss a little bit more on objects let's catch up there